everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to be demonstrating a couple of different stitches which all have the same base, which is the chain stitch. So I will be demonstrating the chain stitch, the detached chain stitch, the slipped detached chain stitch, and the crusted chain stitch. And I'm grouping them all together because they all start with that first chain stitch. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to also receive an email notification, you'll need to click on the little bell icon to the right of the subscribe button. I love hearing from you, so please leave me any comments or questions you might have in the comments section below. And check out the description. That's where I leave lots of links to things that I'm using within the video. Grab something to stitch with, grab a needle and some thread, and let's stitch together. One of the things that I really love about the chain stitch is that you can go right up against the edge of something. It will ride up around the edge. So let me show you that. So I go right up into that same hole that I came out. I take a tiny little stitch, very, very close. We live across the street from a fire department, so I'm actually shocked at how few uh, times when I'm recording I've heard the fire trucks. Now I'm going to go back in right through that first chain, and I'm going to come back out a little ways away. I'm making these small because this is a tiny little circle. And do you see how it riding up the side, even though I'm not stitching into that, but I'm stitching really close. Merlin's found something to play with, which I'm horrified to think what it is. It's probably thread. There's my, my little chain. Go right back in and right out. And now I'm just going to anchor it back down because I've hit my end here. And there it is running right along the edge. I wanted to show you an example of the chain stitch being used in a non-traditional way. This tree trunk is done all in chain stitch. And I just did rows, and then I would turn and go back down the other way, and turn and go back. It really makes, a, gives it a very different look. This is using a pearl cotton number three thread. It's a heavier thread weight. I also whip stitch down a piece of wool underneath and then chain stitch on top, which gives it, you can see how it, it really is raised up. I just wanted to show you that as another example of how the chain stitch can be used in a non-traditional way. All right, so that's the chain. So now let's do the detached chain. Okay, so my detached chain is just like my chain stitch, excepting that I'm not gonna continue. So I make my little chain and then I pull my thread through I anchor that down, and that's my detached chain. I'm going to do three, all emanating from that same starting point. And I can fill this in with a little French knot if I feel like. Now I'm going to show you the crested chain. Crested chain is really beautiful and can be done with any thread and it looks very different. But I'm using a number eight weight variegated eleganza because I'm doing this tiny little leaf right here, which is quite small. If I was doing something much larger, I would do a, a heavier weight thread. I'm gonna come in just like my chain stitch. And now, instead of going back in here, I'm going to go up and take a tiny little stitch, wrap my thread around the top of the needle. Pull my thread through and I get a little tiny knot. Then I take the back of my needle and I go right through that vertical stitch now I'm going to go into 
as though it were a chain stitch right back into that the chain part of the stitches I'm going to go right back in come out a little ways making sure my thread is wrapping around that needle my little tiny stitch wrap that make sure that thread is wrapped over the needle pull my needle through get my little knot now I'm going to take my needle go back to my chain make a little another chain When it's something small like this, I tend to keep everything small. The distance from here to the next chain, the distance from here to the little bite that I take, Since my leaf from this vase is going over, I'm just going to go right in to whatever is there. So in this instance, it's just, I'm putting the little knot into the stem, and that's okay. I know it's harder to see in this because there's a lot going on in this piece that I'm. This is my indigo vases. It's a Sue Spargo workshop. Um, it's fantastic and it's uh it's very much about technique I thought i would show this to you even though it is harder to see what i'm doing just so that you could see that these stitches you just can apply them no matter what's happening you just improvise one thing i wanted to tell you which i think is something that can cause problems for people is where do you end like let's say my thread wasn't this long and i and i ran out of thread what would, where would i end this what i've found is that it helps if i'm ending a thread to end it right at this point and then i just would anchor my thread down i'd then pull my new thread right up in that loop and just continue but sometimes it's hard to know you know with these kinds of stitches where would you end your thread if you ran out i also wanted to show you this little point because here i'm coming to a point so i'm going to take my little stitch right out to the edge it's actually going a little beyond that point that's fine i'm going to emphasize that point and i'll show you how i do that so now it looks fine, but it's actually going beyond the end. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want my little point now to emphasize the point of the leaf. So I'm going to the very tip and I'm going out from that tip. tip. There's my little point. And now I'm going to carry on going this way. So I go back in here, take my little stitch, my little, so my little next little knot is going to go. do. This is going to be my, this is where I'm going to end my thread on the stitch. So I take my little, little bite there, wrap that thread around, go through that, that vertical stitch, and now I'm going to end it right there. And that's where I'm going to come up with my new thread as well. So I'm coming up with my new length of thread right where I ended my last length, right there, that's where I'm coming up. And now I just continue. Oh, 
I'm going to just go ahead and anchor this down now. There's my little crested chain leaf. For the slipped detached chain, I'm going to come up with my thread. I'm going to go back right down into that same hole or as close to it as I can get, just like I would a chain stitch. Come up a little farther away, pull my thread through. I'm going to put my needle down close to where the top of the loop. And I'm going to bring my needle down to the side of that loop like this. Now at the back of my needle, I'm going to slip my needle through that little vertical loop that I made. And I'm going to come down to the same line and I'm going to come right up and I'm going to do my chain again. There's a variation on this stitch, which could be fun and I'm going to show you that too. So you want to go down just a little ways away, come to the side of the loop, sort of middle of it, back of the needle, slip through, come down to the other side, and come up. Variation on this, instead of coming up at the end here, I would come to the other side, slip my needle through again, And come to the other side here. Now I'm going to go up. And that just gives it a little, little variation on the standard slipped detached chain stitch. So to the side, slip the back of my needle through that vertical stitch that I made. to this side. Now if, I, if I'm going to do that second, come back over, slip the back of the needle, go to the top. I mean you could do three if you wanted it. I'm going to anchor my thread here, knot it on the back, and start a new length. If I wanted to make a third one I could. Back of the needle. And come up. So there's your standard slipped detached chain. Then there's the variation where you've got two and here's with three. It's very pretty. Now, if you want to do just a scattering of these, what you would do instead of a, a long chain that's connected, right? You're going to do the exact same thing. Take your little stitch up back of the needle, stitch, come back over here, kind of like the two and three. And then instead of going back up, you're just going to stop, which is also really pretty. You could put a little French knot in here, a little colonial knot, do a tiny little bouillon there. That is the slipped detached chain stitch, the regular chain stitch, the regular detached chain, and the crested chain. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to receive an email notification, you'll need to click on the bell next to the subscribe button. I love hearing from you, so leave me any comments, questions you might have in the comments section below. And check out the description. That's where I leave links to threads that I've used or anything else that I've talked about in the video. Until next time, here's to stitching together.